Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of Understanding Exposure Metering. I am Abhishek and I have with me my colleague Rohan from Nikon India Technical Team. Hi, Hi Rohan. Abhishek. Hi. We will be talking about understanding exposure metering here. How exposure metering works in your camera. So it is very important for our, all our viewers to visit our previous episode on how to shoot in manual mode and understanding stops. Right Rohan? Correct. You know, exposure metering deals with how the camera perceives light. To understand this better, like Abhishek said, you must visit our previous episode. In this episode, Abhishek, we'll be helping our users understand, you know, how does the camera exposure meter work? How does it perceive right. light in different lighting conditions? To understand this better, we've planned a little demonstration. Why not we go ahead and conduct this demonstration, okay. and then we can discuss while the demonstration how the exposure meter works and help our users implement all those learnings in their photography to get better exposures and better images. So here we are to demonstrate how exposure metering works inside the camera. Now whether you are shooting in P mode, S mode or A mode, it is very important for you to understand how exposure meter works inside your camera, especially if you intend to shoot in manual mode. We have the lovely Tudisha with us once more and uh, Tudisha is helping us uh, demonstrate uh, exposure metering. What we are essentially doing here is understanding how the camera perceives light. Like we already mentioned, if the scene is completely filled with white, there's too much light being reflected back to the camera. In this situation here, we have Tudisha wearing white dress, there's a white background. So the camera is receiving a lot of light being reflected back from the white. Right. Exposure meter inside is telling the camera that there is too much light, so it wants the camera to underexpose a little bit. Exactly. So, but what we've done as of now is, we've done the settings on our camera so that we get the scale narrowed down to zero. So the shutter speed that we are having is 1 by 50th of a second with aperture 2.8 and yeah. ISO 250. Correct. So at these settings, this is what in the prevalent light the camera meter says is the best settings to get a portrait. Right. So let's just get a shot. Okay. As we review this shot, you will realize that though the scene is filled with white, she's wearing a white dress, but her hair in front is you know black and is compensating for the camera's exposure meter. So what we'll do is to make you understand this better, I'll have Sudisha just pull back her hair and maybe you know you can tie it into a ponytail or something. So what we are doing here is we are demonstrating how even the colors in your scene, especially the Correct. black and white can alter the exposure. Correct. Right. It can fool the meter into, you know, compensating for other colors and other tones in the image. Exactly. So now what we've done is we've taken the black portion so that is the So there is, is the too much of white now and the black part is uh, removed from the Correct. Scene. If I just shift here, you can see that already the camera is saying that there one is... Stop. One, one stop. Almost, almost one, stop. one stop. The camera is saying that it, the picture is getting overexposed. overexposed. And I haven't even touched anything. The settings are saying it's just that she's just tied her just hair. Just pulled back her hair. Yeah. And it, the camera tells us that we are overexposing right. and we need to underexpose. So if, if we go ahead and take a shot at these same settings, you would see. And if we check the light here in the previous shot and this, it's there is a slight difference you can see. Right. And let's do one thing. We will go ahead and underexpose the shot and try and get a... Uh, to get it back to zero. To get it back to zero and see what happens. So I'm going to just dial down my shutter speed by one stop. That is three clicks. So I've just underexposed by one stop and I take a picture. And there we go. So we are able to match the exposure that was in the first image that is right here. All right. So we can see the similar kind of light happening in the first and the third image. So this is how you know you can relate to more real life scenarios and see how the exposure meter works. But however, to demonstrate a completely opposite situation, let's do something. We will change the background. That's what I was coming completely to. Completely black. There's too much of white now. Let's yes. add a lot of black to it and see how camera reads the... Absolutely. Picture. For our viewers, like we demonstrated in white conditions, what happens is there's too much light being reflected back to the camera. Right. So in that condition, the camera wanted us to underexpose. Exactly. Yeah, but in this condition, it does the opposite. Okay. Since very less light gets reflected back from a color like black. Right. And we have Sabah wearing black and the background is also black. So over here, the camera will tend to overexpose. Okay. So let's have a look at the camera meter at the present moment. 
where I have the camera focused uh, on Saba. And if we check and we zero down, like we said, we have to bring the scale absolutely in the middle. So it gives me a setting of 1 15th of a second with a f2.8 aperture and ISO is 250. Right. So let's take an image and see what does the camera. Yeah, if you see this output, Abhishek, you'll see that, you know, the blacks are a little overexposed. Exactly. They're uh, closer to a dark gray or something like exactly. that. So that's exactly what the camera meter will do in such a condition. Right. Because the camera, as we know, is, uh, you know, tuned to hunt for 18% gray. Right. Whenever it does not find that, it'll ask you to make your settings in a way that it reaches closer to or achieves 18% gray. Right. So in such a case, since we know that our blacks are not looking black, what we can do is uh, try underexposing the shot. So let's try underexposing this particular shot by at least one stop. Okay. So as we had previously said, it's uh, you know three clicks, and let's see. So that's one stop. Let's so that see. is giving us one by twenty-fifth of a second. Sorry, one by twentieth. Twentieth of, of a second with f two point eight and ISO two fifty. I think this is moving a little bit. Yeah, uh, approximately that much. Okay. So let's take an image here. So I just look a little towards this side. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. So if we see this, this is slightly better. Exactly, a little more closer towards black. Yes, let's let's try and go down another stop and see okay. how it works. Like a little less than two stops. Um, right. So I think we are quite, you know, j j uh, quite close to what the colors that we are seeing at present. Right. But let's just do it a complete two stops and see what the result is. For all our viewers here, we are just controlling the exposure by changing the shutter speed. We have kept the ISO and the aperture constant. So just for better understanding, we are just increasing the shutter speed to uh, make it a little more underexposed, getting closer to black. And let's just get the figure. And this is quite close. I mean, exactly. this is absolutely how we can see it right, right now. Right, right. This is a tip to remember over here that every time that you're shooting somebody wearing black, against the black background, the camera will have a tendency to ask you to overexpose. Exactly. But this example should actually help you remember and you know, you should try underexposing the shot a little bit to get the real color. So normally what most of the people think is that getting the meter right onto a zero is what we call proper exposure. Of course, technically that is right, but in these kind of condition where the, we, you have too much of white or too much of black, then you'll have to, you know, at times overexpose your shot deliberately or underexpose your shot deliberately to get that proper exposure, what you actually see through your eyes, right? Correct, correct. So that pretty much, uh, you know, sums up explanation about how exposure metering works in such adverse conditions. Exactly. Just for our viewers, no. here we are using Nikon D810. Correct. Uh, just to demonstrate this particular uh, scene, we are using 7200mm lens so that we can fill the frame fill the with frame. a particular color. And this camera is hooked with the HDMI cable to that LCD screen so that our viewers can get the right view of what all settings we are using. Correct. Abhishek, as we all know that, uh, you know, the camera's metering system is programmed to look for 18% grey. Right. Because that is what the camera thinks of as a neutral ground. That is the color tone that the camera is always looking for. Right. So what happens is every time, be it black or white or any color, the camera kind of looks for 18% grey. Right. Just to demonstrate and for the better understanding of our viewers, what we've done is we've taken a you know big card over here in front of us, which has half of the side painted as black and half painted as white. Exactly. So what I'm going to do is, since we already said that the camera looks for 18% grey, I'm going to fill in the camera frame right now with first with white to show you how does the camera meter work and what kind of results it produces. Exactly. Okay. So uh, what I'll do is right now I'll just zoom in so that I can fill in the frame with white. What we'll do is since we have the meter scale right in front of us, right. we'll change the shutter speed right now just to zero down the scale right in the middle so that we know this is the best exposure that the camera has chosen for this light condition. So let's just take a shot and see what happens. The white is almost appearing like grey. Grey. Right. Like I said, you know, uh, the camera is tuned to look for 18% right. grey, whereas we are shooting white. Right. So now what happens in this scenario is white is reflecting back a lot of light. So the camera meter thinks that there is a lot of light coming in. So it 
asks you or you know suggests under exposing the shot a little right. bit so the meter settings that we did were actually under exposing the shot so that the camera achieves 18% grey okay so let us try the same thing what happens with black okay so we are keeping the same settings no i'm what i'm going to do is i'm going to first turn this camera a little towards the black again just fill this in and let's go back to the screen if we see that uh, it is right now the meter is all towards negative so it's almost like three stops three under stops exposed under. right so let me just dial this down so that we are right in the middle at zero okay so as you can see it's one sixth of a second at f 2.8 and again the iso is same at 250 let us just take a shot over here and if we see again black is also appearing great black is also appearing great right. remember uh, ron just for your viewers when we pointed the camera towards the white area it was kind of giving us overexposed one or two stops then we meter it down to zero Correct. to get that proper exposure again when we pointed the camera towards black it was under exposing by more than two stops so to get it right we chose the shutter speed that can bring us uh, bring the meter down to zero and that was one by sixth of a second yes so that is what actually the exposure metering does in the camera so this is a very nice point to establish abhishek uh, for our viewers that every time we are encountered with the you know settings or situations like this we have to bear in mind that the camera is programmed to achieve 18 percent grey. exactly so if you are not getting your colors right or you know it's a situation where you have absolutely too much white in the scene or too much black in the scene one should try over or under exposing the shot according to the situation to get a better exposure so rohan that was some really exciting information i think now all our viewers will actually nail the exposure every time they'll click the shutter release button right absolutely abhishek i'm sure this is going to be very helpful understanding how the camera exposure meter works and getting a good exposure every time you press down that shutter button all right so that's all for this session and we'll be back with many more interesting sessions. Until then, these are your Nikon buddies, Rohan and Abhishek, signing off. <laughs>